What's up traders, I hope you're doing well. Today we're going to try to replicate the Kodak Color Plus in digital photography. So Kodak Color Plus, otherwise known as Kodak Color, was a style that was suggested by a couple of you guys in the comment section on previous videos. So if you have any video that you want me to make or style that you want me to convert into a preset, don't hesitate to put it down in the comment section and I'll slowly check them out. Now, you know how this works. First of all, we're gonna check out some example images shot with this film stock. So we learn the main characteristics in terms of contrast, exposure, and color grading. So when we jump into Lightroom, we know what to do when we edit a photo and create the preset out of it. So creators, here we have some images shot with a Color Plus 200. And these types of images or these types of exposures is exactly what I envision when someone is talking about the classic Kodak colors. You can see a very natural looking color palette. You can see great latitude of exposure, but we have that warmth through the entirety of the image, which is a classic in all Kodak films. So let's start breaking down the style a bit more and let's go step by step. Let's talk about the exposure and contrast. So in terms of exposure and contrast, we have great amount of information in our image, great latitude of exposure. And what I mean by this is that the shadows are gonna be raised up a bit more. So we have loads of detail over there. And then the highlights are gonna be brought down. So we have a bit more information in those areas as well. In terms of in digital photography, we can achieve this by raising up the shadows and lowering the highlights, whether it be in the tone curve or in the basic corrections. Now, making the shadows a bit brighter and the highlights a bit darker doesn't mean that we lose our contrast because as you can see, we have pure blacks. They're very intense, they're very deep. And also in the other extreme, the whites, the brightest points on our image, well, we do see a little bit of overexposure in those areas. So what we're doing right here is bringing more information into the mid-tones, into the shadows and in the highlights, but in the extremes of our exposure, the blacks and the whites, we're gonna lose a bit of detail over there. Then when it comes to colors, we can see that this film produces a bit of a natural looking color palette, albeit that it's slightly desaturated. We're not gonna have any intense greens, intense blues in our images. And we do have slight shifts in the colors, but nothing too crazy. For example, the blues tend a bit towards the aquas. Then we have the reds more towards the brake light colors and magentas towards the reds, not towards the cooler tones. So we have to keep that in mind when we jump into HSL. Now, obviously we have this very warm hue added to the entirety of the image. We can see it in the snow, we can see it in the sky. And this is just the classic warmth of Kodak. And we can add this either in the RGB channels in the tone curve or in the color grading department. Then another aspect that is worth mentioning is that we have grain, which is very present in our image, but it's not too distracting. It's not the biggest or roughest grain that we've seen, but it is there just giving it a nice texture to our images. So when I was going through these example images, I couldn't help to notice that all these images look as if they were shot with Kodak Gold. And then I found this comparison by bayphotofilm.com. Right here, we have side-by-side -side comparisons of a Kodak Gold 200 versus a Kodak Color Plus 200. And in many of the cases, I can't tell them apart. They're very similar to each other, albeit that the Kodak Gold has a bit more saturation, more natural, and the Color Plus is a bit more desaturated. And then in some cases, we do have that shift in terms of the reds but in general, they're very similar to each other. So right here, you can see this comparison and notice how the Kodak Gold has very controlled highlights and whites in the sky. Meanwhile, the Color Plus, we don't see that control. We see a bit of overexposure and clipping in the bright areas on our image. And that's the difference. That's the price difference and why the Kodak Gold is so renowned and so professional. And the Kodak Color Plus is a lot cheaper and more easy to use. So even in the details in the shadows, you can see how the Kodak Gold over here preserves better the wheat Meanwhile, the color plus, we can see even some clipping in the shadows over here. So that's the main difference between the Kodak Gold and the color plus that are very similar to each other, but one is a lot better in preserving the latitude of exposure than the other. So that's the analysis. Now, before we jump into Lightroom, I'm gonna remind you that this preset that we're gonna to create today, I've already added it into the Edirect preset pack V4, but also the analog preset pack. Now, in the analog preset pack, you're gonna find all the film styles, all the analog styles that we've replicated throughout all the seasons of the Edirect series. So in that pack, you're gonna find the Kodak Portraits, the Kodak Goals, the Lomography, Cinestill, Fujicolor, all the styles grouped in together into a preset pack. So that's a great way you can support me, but in the process, you can skip all my tutorials. So link up here to my shop, just browse around over there, you can find those packs, but also you're gonna find my personal presets that I use every single day to edit my photos. If you follow me on Instagram, you can see examples. Also, uh, you can find my LUTs that I use to edit videos like this one in a faster manner. I really speed up my workflow. So maybe something over there is useful for you guys or you just wanna support me. So I continue to do videos for you guys. And if you can, I'll be very thankful. And if you can't, don't worry guys, let's jump into Lightroom and start editing. 
So creators, here I have this image and it isn't the best image in the world or anything like that, but it does have the elements and the colors that we want to change. We have the blues in the sky, we have the greens and we have reds in the rooftops. And most important is that this image was shot at midday. The Kodak Color Plus comes with a 200 ISO, therefore it's created for daylight photography. So it's very important to select the correct type of image to try to replicate the style with the best accuracy. So let's go with the exposure and contrast and then we're going to move down to the color grading. And as you can see, I already corrected a bit of the overexposure that this image had because, well, it was poorly shot on field and also the angle over here. So don't pay attention to these. Let's move down into the highlights, shadows, whites and blacks. So remember that we want this image to have a lot more detail in the mid tones. So highlights, I'm not going to go towards the positives, although we introduce more brightness and loose information. We want to bring them back so we have more detail in the bright areas on our image. This will affect a lot of the sky. So I'm going to go with a minus 20. Then shadows, we, won't, we don't want to go towards the negatives, otherwise we introduce more contrast. And as you can see over here, we start to lose a lot of information in the shadows. We want to go towards the positives, maybe around the 40s, 50s, just to achieve more information in the dark areas on our image. And then one thing that we did see in some of the example images was how the whites or the brightest points on the image had a bit of overexposure. So we can achieve this with the white slider, just pulling up towards the positives around the plus 20, plus 25, just to make areas like in the shirt over here or the cathedral here in the background be a bit brighter. So we have that little bit of overexposure, which is a characteristic of the Kodak Color Plus. Okay, next up, let's move down to the tone curve. And this step is gonna be a bit optional guys, because what I normally see in Kodak film images is that the blacks, well, they are intense, they are present, they're very strong, but also they're a bit faded out. So they're a bit gray. So in the tone curve, we can achieve this by moving this point, which is in the bottom left corner, not towards the right, otherwise we introduce more strength into the dark areas in our image, but towards the positives, notice how our blacks start to lose strength and they become a bit washed out. So this is exactly what we're gonna do, but not too much, otherwise our image loses all the contrast. Just gonna move it slightly towards the positives. So I'm gonna go with the output value of 10. If you wanna introduce it, this is just the movement in the vertical axis. And as you can see, if I deactivate the tone curve, this is before and after, it's just making our blacks and our shadows a bit raised up, a bit more grayish. So we can see the before and after, this is exposure and contrast, and now we have an image which is a lot brighter because we have a lot more information in the shadows and also in the highlights, while having a bit of overexposure in the brightest points on our photo. Okay, before we move into the colors, we also have here the presence tab, and right here, I'm just gonna reduce a bit of the texture and the clarity in our image, which will control the amount of digital sharpness and digital contrast that this image has. As you know, a digital photography is supremely sharp, even though I was in a moving boat, this image is very sharp. So I'm just gonna reduce a bit of the texture, not all the way to the minus 100, otherwise our image, well, it's too soft, too much. So I'm just gonna reduce it, maybe around the 15, 20 towards the negatives, just enough to reduce a bit of the digital sharpness and clarity will add more contrast into the midtones. So I'm not gonna go towards the positives, just gonna go a bit towards the negatives. Just to reduce a bit of the contrast in the midtones on our image, which is normally what we're exposing. And then the haze is gonna be completely alternative, guys. I'm not gonna move the haze. Um, if you want it, you can use it, but the haze, what it does is around the highlights in our image, towards the negatives, it will create this glowing effect, similar to the halation effect of old film cameras. But in this case, I don't want to use it. You guys can play around and use it. I do sometimes use it in analog styles, but in this case, I'm just going to leave it at zero because I want to retain the contrast and exposure that we already achieved in the basic corrections. Okay, so now let's move down into the colors. And before we jump into the specific tools, let's use the general saturation slider over here just to reduce a bit of the intensity on our colors in throughout the entire photo. This is something that we saw that the Color Plus doesn't have the most vibrant of color palettes. So I'm not gonna go all the way to the minus 100 or anything too steep, but maybe around the value around the minus five to minus 10 is just gonna be enough. So a minus five in the saturation is just gonna create a softer, uh, not too vibrant color palette over here. And you can see it over here in the greens immediately how they're a bit more laid back and less intense. Okay, starting out with the colors, we're gonna move into camera calibration. And right here, what I'm gonna do is just change the overall color palette on our image. So red, green, and blue primary control the RGB, which composes every single pixel that we see in digital images, digital videos, or even in your screen on your smartphone. So the combination of these three colors gives us the exposure, but also the tone. So you have to be very careful by using this tool because as you can see, if I move the blue primary, I'm not gonna alter only the blues, 
but I'm also altering the greens, the reds, every single pixel on our image has a bit of blue. So we have to be very careful with the movements over here. Luckily for us, for this tutorial, is it's gonna be the slightest of movements. So one thing that we did see is that the sky was a bit towards the aquas. So I'm gonna move the blue primary towards the negatives. Not too much, otherwise our sky is completely strange. But a value just around the minus 10 is gonna be enough just to shift the blues on our sky slightly towards the aqua tones. And then another thing that we saw is how the reddish tones tending towards more the brick like color. So I'm gonna to go towards the positives with a red hue. Not too much, otherwise we are shifting all the greens as well. So ever so slightly around the plus 10 as well, just to shift a bit of the rooftops that we have over here because it's the only element that we have of red more towards the brick light colors instead of towards the magentas. Now, you may be asking yourself, Tone, I'm in the mobile version and I don't have camera calibration. Well, you can do something similar by moving in the color mixer over here, go into hue and just move the reds and the blues in a similar fashion just to achieve similar types of results. Now, it's not gonna be the same because in camera calibration, you are affecting other hues, the entire color palette, but it is gonna replicate the slightest of movements in the blues and in the reds if you move in here in the hue. Now, taking advantage that we already use in the color mixer, we are gonna move the blue and the magentas, which is a color that we did see that was shifting more towards the reddish tones rather towards the cool tones. So purples and magentas, I'm gonna drag them towards the positives. In this image, we don't have any purples or magentas, um, but we are gonna see it in other images, just around the 25s. And what we're doing is just shifting all our magentas towards the warmer tones instead of towards the cooler. Okay, next up, we're gonna move into the color grading tool, which was previously known as split toning. And we're not gonna make use of the shadows, highlights, or mid-tone sliders. Instead, we're gonna go all the way to the global color wheel over here. And here we're gonna add that Kodak warmth into our image. So right here, I'm just gonna add some saturation. And I'm gonna go with the hue around the oranges. You guys can play around maybe towards the reddish if you want more of a reddish hue, maybe a bit of a yellow towards the goldish tones. In this case, maybe, I'm gonna go with a hue of, the hue is gonna be 43 and the saturation obviously is extreme. So reduce the saturation and it's gonna be the slightest of hues. I don't recommend to go higher. I'm gonna go with a 10 of saturation. And you can see if I deactivated, this is before, our image is very cool, very natural and after, and now even our sky has this warmish tint added. Of course, you guys can play around with the saturation, maybe go higher. I'm gonna leave it very conservative with a 10 in the saturation. So we can see the before and after right now and it's looking quite nice. One thing that remains is the grain, which is a very important aspect of film or analog photography. So I'm gonna go into the effects tab over here. So I'm gonna add some amount over here just to see the grain. And then I'm gonna add some size to find the correct size. This is way too big. I'm gonna go with maybe with a value around the 50, which is a decent enough size. And then I'm gonna reduce the quantity. Around the 25, I think is gonna be a good value. Now, keep in mind that the values that I'm introducing over here, in particular, the size will vary depending on the resolution of your file. So this image was shot with 33 megapixels with a Sony a7 IV. And we have this resolution. If your image was shot with maybe a 61 megapixel sensor like the Sony a7 R5, maybe the grain with this value is a bit too small. So you maybe need to make it a bit bigger. And maybe if your image was shot, let's say with the Sony a7S III, 12 megapixels, this grain in your image with all this amount of 50 is gonna look way too big. So maybe you need to drag it down towards the negatives to make it a bit smaller. So keep in mind that grain to this day is not adjusting the size depending on the resolution of your file. I have hopes that in the future it will become a bit more intelligent with a bit of AI. Okay, so right here, the preset is basically complete. We have that Kodak warmth. We have that and a very nice grain. And we have an image with great latitude of exposure and that slight shift in the color pack with a bit of desaturation. So I think we did quite a good job. Now let's save it and test it out in other images. So to save a preset, we're gonna go to the left panel over here. On the presets, hit the plus sign and create preset. Here we are gonna name it. And you don't wanna mark anything that you didn't use. Always mark what you did use. And for example, white balance, exposure, and contrast, these three, I like to unmark them. So these are gonna be the sliders that I move around. Maybe if my image was poorly shot on field, like in the image that we are editing right here. So don't mark them and then we can hit create. Okay, so here I have this image of Plaza España in Seville. So let's apply the preset. It's already in the air like V4. So let's apply it. And you can notice the difference. Notice how the shadows are a lot less intense. They're a lot softer. I have a lot more information in the dark areas on our image. I have the sky slightly towards the aqua tones. We have that very nice grain and that overall warmth through the entirety of the image. So it's looking very nice. So always remember that this preset works very well in bright sunny days. So we can apply the preset over here into this image of myself. 
and I'm gonna apply it and it looks fantastic. In particular, I like how it adds more warmth into the image with this very retro look. And one thing that you can always play around with is with the slider of the haze that we didn't add to the preset. If you go towards the negatives, notice how these bright areas on our image are gonna start to glow just a bit. But always keep in mind that if you add it, it becomes a lot more stylized and also you lose a bit of the contrast on your image. So this preset being quite subtle, it makes it very useful for all types of photography. For example, street photography over here, it adds this warmth, this Kodak warmth, and it's very useful for day-to-day -day photography, for memories or anything like that. And as we don't have any wild shifts in terms of contrast and saturation, you can even apply it to portraits and it's gonna look, look fantastic, just adding a bit of warmth, a bit of information into the shadows and the skin tones are gonna to be very well preserved. But in general terms, I think we did quite a good job. We have the overall color palette that we were looking for. We have the information added into the mid-tones without losing that overexposure. And we have a very nice looking filter replicating the Kodak Color Plus. So there you have it guys, that's my interpretation of the Kodak Color Plus 200, otherwise known as Kodak Color in Digital Photography. So I hope you achieved some knowledge out of this video. And just a reminder, this preset is already in the LX V4 and the analog preset packs. So link up here to my shop in case you want to support me. Also, there's the link to my Patreon if you want to check out the tiers. Maybe something over there is useful for you guys. And in the process, you can support me so I continue to do videos for you guys. Now, if it's not in your possibility to support me in any of those ways, don't worry guys. Just like the video, share it maybe on social media or on Facebook groups or on Reddit anywhere. That really helps me out. Like the video, comment down below, subscribe. I'm Tony Fuentes, just to all of you, and I'll see you in the next one.